Yo, what's going on everyone? Z Hunter 115 here, back with another Cold War Zombies video. Treyarch has released a barrage of information regarding the core mechanics of their zombies game mode. In the blog post, they talk about perk upgrades, skill tiers, weapon rarities, loadouts, and much more. In this video, I'll be going over everything that there is to know from that blog post. So if you like the video, please don't forget to drop a like. And anyways, let's just get straight into it. Starting off, let's take a look at the perks. On launch day, there will be six different zombie perks to crack open. Juggernaug, Quick Revive, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, Deadshot Daiquiri, and an all new perk called Elemental Pop, which we saw in the trailer. Don't worry, they will introduce new perks throughout the post-launch seasons. And here are the descriptions. Juggernaug increased maximum health by 50. This is actually different now because Jug will only give you an extra hit. But don't worry as there are ways to upgrade these perks. We also have Quick Revive, reduce the time it takes to regen the full health by 50%, and it also reduces the time it takes to revive an ally by 50%. Speed Cola, increase reload speed by 15%. Stamina Up, increase run and sprint speed. Deadshot Daiquiri, aiming down sights, moves to enemies' critical location, remove scope sway. And Elemental Pop, every bullet has a small chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. With every shot fired, there will be a slight chance for a random base ammo mod to take effect against the target, an incredibly useful tool for when your back's up against the wall. But what happens when you want to take your perks to the next level? Well, this is where Treyarch introduces perk upgrades for the first time in Zombies history. To upgrade your perks, you need to earn raw ethereum crystals by reaching milestones rounds within the game, or through successful exfiltration. What's more, you'll be able to upgrade skills related to field upgrades, ammo mods, and weapon classes to help you stay alive even longer as you collect and invest more ethereum crystals. Over time, you're going to be using these crystals to improve the tools in your arsenal, improving their damage and utility to help you reach higher rounds. Anyway, each perk will be able to be upgraded through three tiers, and once you upgrade them, they will be permanent. So here is an example. With Elemental Pop on tier 1, it will allow equipment damage to also have a chance to apply the base ammo mod effect. Tier 2 will reduce ammo mod cooldowns by 20%, and tier 3 when a random ammo mod is applied, it uses your current skill tier instead of the base. Moving on from perks, let's talk about weapon rarities. There's going to be 5 tiers. First off, there's common, which are basically loadout weapons. Then there's uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Each tier increases the damage done by those weapons and will also determine how many randomized attachments will come along for the fight. For example, an uncommon weapon will feature a 50% damage boost over its loadout version and comes with just two attachments, while the legendary version kicks up to roughly 300% damage and comes stacked with eight attachments. Moving on to custom loadouts, a lot of people were skeptical of weapon loadouts coming into zombies, but after learning about weapon rarities, I'm not too worried. Another reason why I'm not worried and you shouldn't be either is because zombies loadouts will be simple. Way more simple than your multiplayer loadouts. So basically, you can only bring a single weapon and a field upgrade. Furthermore, that single weapon will have its attachments and cosmetics, but it will be the lowest rarity. So you'll still need to make sure to get higher tier weapons. Next up, field upgrades. Field upgrades in zombies are entirely different from those found in multiplayer. For those that play BO3 and BO4 Zombies, they're basically specialist weapons. On launch, there will be 5 field upgrades to choose from. First off, we have Frost Blast. Create a frigid blast of wind that deals frost damage and slows enemies caught inside of it. Slowed enemies take additional damage. Healing Aura. Summons beams of energy down on yourself and allies to instantly heal to full health. Energy Mine will create a mine of pure energy that detonates on proximity enemies, dealing explosive damage. We also have Ring of Fire, create a ring of ethereal fire that boosts damage for you and allies. Normal enemies who enter gain a burning effect that deals fire damage, lasts for 15 seconds. And Aether Shroud, phase into the dark aether for 5 seconds, becoming hidden from enemy detection. They also talked about armor and salvage. 
replacing the crafted shield from previous zombies experiences, armor provides a 360 degree layer of protection from the armies of the undead. Armor can be found as a rare drop from enemies or purchased using salvage. This is a little different from the old shield system that we used to have, as they said, it will protect you in all directions. However, when a zombie hits the armor, it will still deal a little bit of damage to your character. So you're not completely immune to damage while wearing this armor. To keep repairing it, you can pick up armor shards dropped from certain enemies. You can use salvage to get a new armor, or you can pick up a carpenter which will regen your ammo. Additionally, armor can be upgraded to additional levels, increasing its damage mitigation and durability. Next up, we have support and score streaks. For support at launch, there will be five you can choose from. A combat bow, a sentry turret, a war machine, a chopper gunner, and self-revive. These will be available via the mystery box if you're lucky. And don't worry, if you hop into the chopper, zombies will completely ignore you so you will be safe. They also mentioned the exfil system. Starting at the end of round 10 and every 5 rounds after, you'll have the option to use a radio in the starting area of the map to call in exfil. In a co-op game, the majority vote will decide whether or not you exfil. Once triggered, the normal round will end and you'll be giving a new objective to reach the exfil site within a specific time limit. At this point, Zombies will begin to flood the area in a last ditch effort to stop your squad and once you reach the site, a helicopter will fly above and hover until the zombies are cleared. If you make it onto the chopper, you will escape with some bonus XP and the chance to earn raw ethereum crystals. And lastly, they mentioned the ping system which will be available to zombies for the first time ever. It will function exactly like it will in multiplayer. Cool little feature for co-op players, of course. So anyways, that was all that was revealed regarding Cold War Zombies and their core mechanics. Make sure to let me know what you all think about this in the comment section below. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this matter. Personally, I gotta say that this has me very excited. Loadouts was kind of messing with me, but after learning that loadout weapons will be the weakest versions, I felt a little better about them. Same with Juggernaug. Juggernaug only giving you an extra hit seems kind of lame, but the fact that we can upgrade the perks including Jug, so we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Hopefully, it's a lot better. The only thing that worries me is the armor system. I really liked using the shield in previous zombies experiences, so I'm hoping that this doesn't feel too easy or too different at the same time. And that's all I got for today. Please don't forget to drop your comments down below. Let me know what you all think about all this information. So if you found this video informative or helpful in any way, a like rating is always appreciated. And if you want to subscribe for more content like this, that'll be amazing as well. Have a good rest of your day and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.